Realistic Vision is one of the most popular checkpoints at the moment due to its ability to create photorealistic images almost effortlessly. So why don't we see how far we can really push this checkpoint so you can spend less time reading and more time creating. Drop a like on the video to support the channel and thank you for all of your support over the last few months. But enough chit chat, let me give it to you bite sized. Realistic Vision is a checkpoint developed by SG16 and right from the start we have a number of lifelike images which look like they were taken on a smartphone, promising fantastic results with minimal prompting. Looking at the generation data, the prompts look simple which does make me a bit worried. If an image this good can be generated with these simple prompts, what would happen if we were to add more to fine tune our results? Will the results be more to my liking or worse off? We shall find out soon. But the negative prompts are on the opposite side of the coin, giving us a slab of them to chew on. I'm not fussed about negative prompts as they are often fire and forget. I'm using the Vey version of 5.1 and there are a couple of recommended settings the author has included in the description. The summary is to use their recommended Vey if you're using the no Vey version and I have a link to it in the description box below. If you're getting a strong contrast in your images, which is basically harsher shadows and brighter lights, then use a negative value with the LoRa Detail Tweaker, which will also be in the description. The author has provided prompt templates alongside two negative prompts, which we can choose from, and I'll be going with the shorter one as it's used within the example images, but either should work fine. You have two sampling methods to choose from, either EULA A or DPM++ SDE Caras. And this is how Stable Diffusion goes from a noisy image to a clean image, and I'll be testing both using XYZ plot. You can also choose from a CFG scale of 3 or 5 to 7, and I'll be testing out those values to see if there's any major differences between them. The denoising strength which determines how much of the image's content should be respected when upscaling is from 0.25 to 0.45, while the upscale is from 1.1 to 2 using the ultra sharp upscaler, a personal favourite which I'll link in the description and I'll be testing both Clipskip 1 and 2. The ENSD, also known as ETA Noise Seed Delta, is a value which is added onto the C number when generating images and is used to allow different user interfaces to have different generations even when using the same seed. You can find the option under settings within the sampler parameters section. The page ends with a thank you note to all of the model creators whose work contributed to this checkpoint and no doubt I'll be checking out their works in future. Now let's do some testing and remember that timestamps are available so you can skip along to something you're interested in but of course do watch the entire video so we get recommended into the algorithm. So I always like to start my test by replicating one of the example images so let's go with Chloe who is apparently a random name thrown into the prompt so I'd be keen to see what happens if we choose a different name like Bob. But as you can see we get the exact same image looking absolutely fantastic. Something which stands out to me in this model is that the teeth are really detailed and anatomically correct despite the eyes looking a bit frog like. Next I wanted to see if there was any difference using unrealistic dream and while the results are different it's hard to say whether or not there's a difference in quality the unrealistic dream version has better lighting and the eye on the right looks better but the left eye now looks like a cat rather than a frog. For some fun I swapped out the name Chloe for some others on three rows of random seeds and yes Destiny is apparently a popular black girl's name according to Google alongside Beyonce but it did seem to associate some names with certain characteristics. Chloe looks like your typical British girl while luckily Bob didn't have a bald head asking to fix my plumbing although it was the only image that was nude so make of that what you will. Destiny did not turn out black but I also noticed she looked a lot similar to Chloe so not much of an impact there. But here's where things get interesting because using the name Park did give Chloe a more Asian appearance while Carlos has a more South American look so there is some impact to be seen. I tested this again using Unrealistic Dream just to see whether we could notice any quality improvements and the results were similar to the last except far worse with strange artifacts showing up within the images. Very quickly, here we can see the impacts of different samplers with DPM++ SDE Keras giving us the best results, less airbrush skin and more natural lighting. On the CFG scale, there are some differences to be noted in quality with 3 looking more airbrushed and 10 looking the most realistic and being the CFG scale, the example image used. 
We then have our denoising levels and on the upscale values, I'll test the minimum value and the maximum value since it's not available on the plot. There were minimal differences on the 1.1 upscale between denoising strengths, but on an upscale of 2, the denoising strength was far more noticeable and of lower quality, making Chloe look like she had one too many martinis. I think less is more in this instance, so an upscale value of 1.1 should do just fine in most instances. Lastly, let's look at the clip skip, where 2 is often better than 1, but in this instance, we get a somewhat surprising result where Chloe clearly forgot her sun cream, and I'm not sure which one is the better image. Clip skip 1 has better quality, but 2 gives us this different variation which sticks out to me for some reason. I'd honestly have to take both. Looking to our landscape, they only had one available and it turned out as expected, so no problems there. I noticed that this image came with the unrealistic dream and bad dream embedding, so here's the image without, and I'll summarise the information while showing you the comparisons so we can move on to running our own tests. The embedding seemed to improve the landscape piece, so do keep both of those in. Out of the two sampling methods, DPM++ SDE Karas takes another win, giving us the better image. Out of all the CFG scales, 7 was the most vibrant and convincing, but 5 was also a good choice. On denoising strength and an upscale of 1.1 and 2, there wasn't much difference in the results. And finally, looking at the clip skip, 1 does give the better result, but 2 does also have this very nice sunset where the dramatic lighting is coming through. I think 1 takes the crown in this instance, as the sun is likely due to an output of the seed. Now it's time to run our own custom prompt, ensuring we include those recommended prompts from earlier and include the LoRa for the contrast. I've opted to go for a more Asian setting at a street festival in this image, testing three different seeds with and without the embedding. Now the quality of the images is rather disappointing, with the embedding not providing much difference in quality. While the background is okay, there's this uncanny look to the faces of the characters where they all seem to share the same face across different seeds. I can't see much contrast, but I ran the test with the add detail LoRa on a small negative value so we don't lose too much detail, with and without our negative embedding. Again, the results aren't as good as the sample image, and I didn't notice any improvements. But something I did try was to change the cowboy shot to a close-up portrait shot, and the results were vastly improved. I think the results are better when the subject is closer to the camera, while further away shots begin to produce artefacts. As a final test on the quality, I ran it through some other settings to see if we can improve the longer distance images a bit more. Starting with the sampling method, it's no surprise that DPM++ gave the better results. I then tried out the CFG scales, and again, 7 seemed to be optimal for good results with minimal artefacts. As our results are low quality, perhaps using the upscale would improve the outcomes. And testing this with different denoising strengths, the results are much better across the board, with denoising strength making minimal changes to the quality. Now we're getting somewhere, and this is without the add detail LoRa or negative embedding, so perhaps an upscale of 2 is what we need to kick this into overdrive. And the results are vastly better, so if you're getting poor quality images on subjects that are far from the camera, use high res fix to bump up the quality, or bring the subject closer to the camera. Lastly, this is how the clip skip impacts the image, with one consistently giving the best results. Now that we've tested the quality, I wanted to see whether this checkpoint can do some style adjustments, as our characters have mostly the same look, and one thing I like about checkpoints is variety. Starting with the face, I added in a few celebrity names to see if we can draw a likeness to that celebrity on an upscale of 1.1 and denoising of 0.45 and it did work for some celebrities like Gal Gadot, Scarlett Johansson and Natalie Portman, but not for the male celebrities, likely because our prompt specifies a woman. I then tested different art styles after removing the recommended prompts so they don't conflict, and I had to add some weighting, but only the impressionism style seemed to have any impact, with the others doing nothing, so perhaps this checkpoint isn't the best for different art styles. I then removed the Asian prompt so I could try different skin tones without them conflicting, and there was some variation to be found, meaning you can indeed customise skin tones, providing they are realistic and not purple. For my final test, I wanted to try and generate distinct faces on three different seeds to see whether or not we can get a look that's accurate to our prompt, or whether the faces will have that similar look no matter how we prompt. On our first image, I added in freckles, a curvy figure, full lips, and strong jawline, and the freckles look more like acne scars, and there's definitely a lot of curve on the face. 
Something which has stood out to me is that this checkpoint seems to lack the beautification and Instagram ready images which other checkpoints seem to lean towards in most instances. On our second image, I've opted for a tall woman looking angry with a slim face and a blonde ponytail with a blue ribbon. And across our three seeds, we get a consistent face which is different to the last prompt we used but there's something going on here where the images look very similar. I'm sure I'm not going crazy. To test this, I went even deeper by specifying the type of nose the character would have as the last two images had very similar noses and despite specifying three different types of noses, there was no difference whatsoever which I think explains the problem. The faces are different but only slightly in areas like the face size or overall body but it's like they all stem from the same template rather than being unique and individual faces belonging to different biological entities. As my final test on the portrait, before we move on to running a few prompts on the landscape, I wanted to try and generate an optimal image using my own adjustments. So regarding the prompts, I made some adjustments highlighted on the screen, replacing raw photo with street photography and adjusting some of the quality and lighting prompts to try and reduce the cinematic effects. I wanted my character to have a more youthful appearance, so I took the 18 year old prompt from the example image alongside makeup and I've added in some bokeh to help the background fade a bit more. I'm also using After Detailer as I find that it helps to fix certain parts of the image but especially on the teeth which tend to turn out somewhat odd at a distance using a detection model confidence threshold of 0.8 and an in-paint denoising strength of 0.25. Now everyone will have their own opinions on what makes an image better so consider this a different way to go about generating an image rather than thinking that this is the best workflow to be used at all times. While this checkpoint is geared towards people in portrait pieces, I figured why not generate a few landscapes to see what kind of outcomes we can get considering how realistic this checkpoint can be. But I'll only do a few as I don't want to repeat things we've already covered and I'll be using both the bad dream and unrealistic dream embeddings. I started with the stormy castle in the forest and it's a brilliant result, not much to say other than it could do with a couple of birds and maybe a closer camera shot. My second image was for a city with skyscrapers in an empty street and strong winds and I was curious to see how strong winds would be interpreted. What we got was a somewhat convincing image of a city with skyscrapers with lights everywhere looking like a corporate district in central London. My last environment piece is an underwater ruin with a glowing whirlpool with bubbles and fish which is more of a fantasy piece similar to Atlantis. The results to my surprise were handled pretty well we have the ruins and the glowing light, no whirlpool but we are underwater with the water surface looking very distorted but no fish to be seen. But what do you think of this checkpoint and review? Drop a like on the video before you leave and consider supporting to help the channel grow. This is Bite Size Genius and I hope you enjoyed.